One timers back again, Justin and Matt. Let's talk about the other side of the bracket now. Uh, the Group B winners, the Dutch, the Netherlands. Whew, they they've been looking very good. Uh, they s just destroyed the defending champ Spain, uh, but they got a a pretty tough uh, battle in my opinion, just due to how well defensively this team has been playing. Um, they're taking on the United States rivals in Mexico. Uh, this is a tough one for me to unbiased, JT. Uh, Mexico's a rival, and if I had to cheer for a team, uh, I, if, if I couldn't cheer for USA, um, I have to choose another team to cheer for. I cheer for uh, I, I'm a big fan of Netherlands and a lot of their players. Um, but trying to be unbiased, I mean, Netherlands uh, did as well as they can get to, as well as anyone did to the group. Uh, they, they got they got three, they got the wins. Uh, they're actually, I, they're, when, when Netherlands, I'm, when Netherlands is getting the connection they're passing from the back, they're so dangerous going up. I mean, Ben Persville is like, he's playing well. Robin, uh, it's, it's, he's a little older, but he's still flying down the field. So, Mexico took on Brazil, so you never know, but, uh, I, 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 I Netherlands is, yeah, the Dutch look pretty good um, against Spain. The thing I will say, they also look pretty good against um, Chile. But the this is the one that gets me is I think out of the three teams in that group that the Netherlands played, Mexico is most like Australia. Which is the one team that really gave the Dutch a run. I mean, they had to win that one three two. They were trailing at one point. Um, I think Mexico more kind of lines more up a, a, like uh, an Australia, where you only have one or two guys that really threat from scoring, but they lock down defensively. They they uh, they just frustrate you on the defensive end. Um, and if Ochoa plays fantastic like he has been in the group stage, uh, it could really kind of uh, frustrate the Dutch just in that sense that they can't seem to find that goal. And then if uh, if um, Peralta or Dos Santos or if Chicharito comes in and scores a goal that puts the Dutch down, that could very well put them in a, in a, in a frantic thing. And, and I'm, I'm sure you and I can talk about this, but there's the, the Dutch collectively are a very good team, but there's also a lot of players uh, and, and Robin and, and I feel like in Van Persie, um, and, and a little bit in Snyder that feel like when the time comes, if they're down, they just have to do it themselves and don't use anyone else on the team. Yeah, uh, Robin gets into that a little bit with the, kind of the hero ball. And it, I think I, I think we can both, uh, in, our, in our entire experience, and I have been both watching, I think uh, in all sports, really, with ta when you put talent base, it's a basketball too. When, when, a, when the team... When if you're a teammate of a guy like Robin and all he's doing is dribbling, and then all of a sudden he decides to pass, I think you're not ready for it. You're not ready for it. Right. And then it kind of contributes. Uh, if he keeps dribbling like that, um, they're not likely to make good runs because they're going to be discouraged uh, to make good runs once uh, once you get the ball. So that can be a problem. That that big three with Schneider and and Van Persie and Robin really is the heart and soul. I mean, they're, they're as good as any three players that anyone else has on this in the tournament. Um, Mexico, I think, um, I don't know, I'm better with Javier Hernandez. I, I, I don't know if I agree with him coming off the bench. I, I, and and that's not even a weird thing. I mean, he, he's, he's on, I believe he, when, when players aren't doing that well at the club level, it seems like, uh, it, it, I don't know if the players only translate to the national level, but he, uh, I feel like they're almost punished for how they well do at the club level, even if they're doing well at the international level. And I just think that physical presence and having a guy lurking around the top of the box would be what is good for Mexico to have when you know, they go out there attacking players or mind of speed and taking guys on. You kind of need a guy like, like Kosa or, uh, uh, or Van, uh, Van Nistel, like type of guy mm -hmm. to, to work and look for the rebound and turn cheap goal, maybe. Uh, I know it would definitely could help. Um, side note, I, it's hard to say there's a more entertaining coach to watch in the tournament than, than uh, Herrera. Yeah. He's a, he's, a, he's a big bundle of joy. Uh, 
we saw when he was soaking rain. We saw we saw when he was uh, hot and sweaty, running around, jumping on people. Um, so um, I think that energy is definitely translating to the players, and uh, I think with ESPN definitely needs to adapt a coach camp for at least that game. So uh, it, it's fun to watch, and it's fun to get to him excited. Yeah, I agree. I, you know, I think. I think you need to start Chicharito in this game because I think Chicharito is going to be hungry to score a goal and, and and potentially send Mexico through over the Dutch simply because him and Robin Van Persie for the last couple of years have been basically fighting each other for that striker spot at, at United. And I think this is a this is a time when I'm sure Chicharito would love to just go against Robin Van Persie and outduel him in a, in a scoring match and you know, potentially show, um, especially because isn't it's the Dutch coach, isn't he the new United, uh, the United coach? So he could possibly potentially show him there too, like what he's worth. Um, I, I think this is going to be a very good game. This might be one of the best games in in this round. Um, I think this one very could be one that could, it could be penalties that really decide it, and, and I. It's tough for me to say. Um, I like the way both teams have really kind of played. They have different game styles um, and different strategies coming into this, but they both meet into this round because they, they've perfected it. Um, but I I think the Dutch might just be a little too talented. I, I'll, I'm going to take the Netherlands to win this game. Uh, I, th- I think, I don't want to see it from Israel. They don't seem like they have... Uh, class in the last third in a lot of their games they can't quite get there mm-hmm. even their the get, even the game against uh, I believe it was Cameroon when they had the tap-in so they could, and uh, the tap-in they, they could they, they had a laddie at that time kind of a, I don't know if they cheap goal but they had to get a rebound tap-in to, to get that one um, and I think a thing that we've seen a little bit in the tournament is for the teams that are willing to take risks I don't want to copy Nike I know they have um, that will risk everything. Uh, but they really, that really truly seems what has carried a lot of teams through. Uh, for, I mean, a small example, uh, our lineup, USA, we, there's been a lot, there's been some changes from game to game. Mm-hmm. And that's really helped us. So, I think Javier Hernandez would be a good help. Um, I just, I, I, I see, I see a high scoring game. I think, I think a 3 2, 4 2 Netherlands, uh, score line is what's gonna happen. Um, I think I'll show it for, for the next little win. I'll show it means to have a huge, huge game. Yeah. He might have, I, I think he might have to, you know, I, I can see Robin having a, a one-on-one with him. I'll show him not to come up big you know, in a situation like that for the next to have a chance. So I think this could end up being uh, this, my prediction of the two of the games are this game and the Brazil Chile game will be the two most electric games from a, from a, uh, Unbiased, uh, neutral standpoint. Um, I think we have to be high scoring here. But I think the other one wins by going, making cheap goals and the Venezuela uh, with all the firepower they have and the total football movement. 